Software engineering is not easy. It's full of rejection, frustration, and feeling completely lost most of the time. But most people give up because they don't actually expect it to be this hard. But if you push through, the rewards are life-changing. Let's break down why it is so tough and give you some tips on how you can actually succeed in software engineering. Let's get into it. So if you're new, my name is Zazo. I've been coding for over 10 years and I've held different tech jobs from data analytics, software engineering. I was a software engineer for roughly around three to four years um, professionally, but I've been coding and building software throughout my whole time of being in the industry. So the first thing that makes software engineering so hard, so tough, is rejection is actually inevitable in this role or in this field, right? You will get rejected a lot. And I mean a lot. I don't mean like, you know, you submit five applications and then, you know, you get one interview. That's not what I mean, right? Especially if you're on your first job hunt, expect dozens, maybe even hundreds of rejections. And I'm not lying about this. Most people can't handle that level of rejection. Most people don't even do things because they don't like the feeling of rejection. In software engineering, it's going to happen. It's going to happen for things that like, for companies that you looked up to, you know, working for straight out of college, whatever your situation is, oh, I really want to work at this company and you will get rejected. And that's tough. That's tough to take that hit to your ego. Even though you've been doing what you need to do, software engineering is not fair in that way, right? So you will get rejected. You will get rejected a lot. However, this is not a reason to stop. Just think of every rejection as a lesson. And if you keep pushing and keep building your skills, you will eventually break through. This kind of teaches a, a lesson in itself behind the software engineering. It teaches you that perseverance and that determination to keep going, keep learning, keep bettering yourself. And eventually you will get that position as long as you're doing the right things and you're staying determined and you're always trying to be better. It will come, right? And you'll kind of build up a little bit of sense of, rejection doesn't hit as hard anymore. And that is a thing that can take you a long way in not only software engineering, but also in life, right? And then at that point, you'll actually realize that rejection is part of the process. It's not, you know, saying that you're a failure or anything like that. Rejection is a part of the process. Software engineering, even more so because there are plenty of like-minded individuals like yourself in the same situation, all fighting for the same roles because it is so life-changing and rewarding. But this is another thing that you might think would just get you a foot in the door because it would in almost any other situation. So the next one is actually hard work is not actually guarantee you success. You can spend months, even years learning to code, and still struggle to land a job. Many developers work hard, but it feels like the market is stacked against them, right? So you'll be sitting and you'll be doing either your coursework, your side projects, whatever it is, and you'll be applying for these jobs and not getting any response or anything, just being ghosted and all that. And you kind of get in a mindset of like, oh, the market is stacked against me. It's not always just about the pure effort and the pure hard work that you're putting in. It's also about strategy. You can't just make a lot of things. You actually have to be strategic with what you're doing. Are you working on projects that actually stand out? Or are you working on just the regular projects that are, you know, expected the everyday, just little things here and there? Or are you making a conscious effort to strategically try to win these employers over by standing out with your projects? Right. One, are you networking, period? That's the first thing, because I know it can be hard to network and hard to put yourself out there. You talk to people that you may not know or it might be unfamiliar because you're not usually the one that will introduce yourself to others and you kind of let stuff come to you. That's not going to work because at the end of the day, you are the one that needs something. So you're going to have to make that effort and go out there to not only network, but are you networking with the right people, right? Are you networking with other developers? Are you grabbing knowledge from senior developers that that you can kind of get in contact with what are you doing right who are you networking with are you learning things stuff like that another thing is are you adapting to the industry trends right there's a lot of different things that were previously needed that aren't needed anymore like nobody needs a like html and css expert anymore those are kind of just like the prerequisites right you should know html and css just because right i would even say a little bit of javascript like that's just kind of the normal 
even for like maybe even back in you know engineers you got to be careful in what you're like specializing in i should say or what you're putting your most time in i'm not saying do not learn html css you should learn it however you should learn it to a certain degree and it shouldn't be too in depth right hard work definitely matters but smart work is actually the difference in getting a software engineering position so another reason why it can be so tough to be a software engineer is you are expected to work independently now you may say well there's a lot of positions that you can you know work independently or you're expected to work independently so what do you mean by this right so usually coming out of school or just anybody in general you're really used to using structured learning tutorials courses or something that's a real clear way path or roadmap and the real world is not like that at all at work no one's holding your hand no one's sitting here and telling you go here go there this is what you need this is not what you need you'll need to get tasks without having like step-by-step -step instructions you'll get a feature that will say build this and you'll get like a couple reference points maybe right and that's not saying you will it'll just throw you out there a lot of the time and they'll say hey build this and you will feel lost like you're on an island just chilling by yourself and that's normal. That's actually how the real world works. It's not somebody holding your hand through every single problem, every single line of code, right? But the key to overcoming this is to actually learn how to navigate uncertainty without panicking, right? Literally take a step back, breathe and understand where do I need to go from here? What steps do I need to take? in order to get this done. Now, this next one is something that I believe everybody struggles with and not only like once, but multiple times throughout their career in software engineering. So this next one is imposter syndrome will hit hard, right? Even after you land the job, you'll start wondering, am I actually good at this? Did I just get lucky on this role? What if they find out I have no idea what I'm doing? Right. Pretty sure if you've been in the industry or even if you're kind of maybe in an internship or anything like that, you're kind of thinking around these same things. Right. This does never fully go away. So how I would think of kind of embrace it. Right. Because senior engineers feel it. I've been in different roles and seen different level of software engineer and they still have the same thing. I'll go up to them, we'll have a meeting, blah, 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 blah. These are the different things that everybody's attached to, and I'll go and I'll say, yeah, so I was thinking this, this, and this, and this, and a senior will literally say to me, I have no idea what I'm gonna do right now. Like, I don't, off of that meeting alone, like, I don't know, right? This doesn't go away. I've seen it real, real world. So this doesn't go away, but I'll kind of give you some things on how you can get through it. So this, like I just said, was a very good way for me to kind of understand that everybody goes through this, seeing and being in the field. If you don't have that per se, you can take this and let me tell you, it doesn't go away, right? So you're not alone if you feel like you don't know what you're doing currently, right? The key thing is that you develop the skills to figure out what you're doing or be able to get to a point to where you can figure out whatever you're doing or in that role or specifically about a line of code or whatever it may be, right? Also take account of the wins that you have and put it somewhere. The reason why I say that because it can very get very caught up in two, three, four years down the line, you're in the same scenario and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm looking at. But if you look at those four years past, you'll see all these different things that you also didn't know what you were doing before you did it and you completed it. And it kind of just gives you that boost of, I don't know what I'm doing, right now but i know that i can figure it out and then that gives you a sense of confidence that there's nothing you can't throw my way and i'm not going to figure it out and you just have to kind of take a look back and say okay i've been here before i know that i can get through it right it feels the same every time i don't know what i'm doing this is new don't know how to do this but with you taking account of those wins you'll be able to say well i've been in the same situation i know that i can do it i just have to figure it out Right. And just understand that confidence comes from experience, experience in making mistakes, experience in these different scenarios, being in this situation over and over again, not from avoiding mistakes and trying to essentially weasel your way around getting the answer every single time, kind of like cheating on a test. You find a way to cheat on the test, 
then when your your friend moves or something like that, then you can no longer cheat on the test and then you're a fraud, right? So don't go away from avoiding mistakes and trying to like weasel your way. Just embrace experiences, whether they be mistakes, learning experiences, whatever it may be. Embrace that and you'll learn from your mistakes. So this is another thing and this is probably a more controversial one, but AI is not going to save you. At the end of the day, AI tools like ChatGPT and Copilot are changing the game for sure. But if you rely on them too much, you won't actually learn how to code, right? So this is specifically very important for junior developers or somebody that's getting into the space that AI can definitely speed things up, but it can't really think for you, right? If you don't understand the code that AI actually generates, then you'll definitely struggle when things break and being able to, you know, actually debug it you'll use AI kind of like a crutch and you won't be able to solve problems for yourself, which is essentially all that software engineering is. So it can get you and it can mask a lot of the things, but at the end of the day, your real skills will shine through if at a certain point, unless you're just trying to be an intern or a junior developer for the rest of your career. But even that you're going to, at some point, you're going to be met with someone who's actually equipped with the skills and there's going to be a significant difference and you just don't want to go down that road. I've seen it and it's not that hard to actually sniff out, honestly. For people that have been in the industry and that kind of know these different things, if you are just generating code, that essentially just makes you chat GBT. So that makes you just as replaceable as everybody is scared of being replaced. If you are doing exactly what chat GBT is doing, generating code, why would they need you there? They would just use chat GPT. I think that's the thing that people don't realize about generating code. You can generate code. Chat GPT can generate code. You're getting paid a salary. Chat GPT is, I didn't say free, but costs less than you. Let's get rid of the salary, right? If you're doing the same thing as these things are doing, then what's the point of you as a software engineer, right? Those are the people that would essentially be replaced by AI because they're doing nothing but being a human body for AI and taking up a salary. So be careful when using AI because it won't save you at the end of the day. And the last but definitely not least is the learning never ends in software engineering. So software engineering isn't something that you can learn, finish learning, right? Like you can finish learning your ABCs. You will never really finish learning software engineering. There'll be new frameworks, new languages, and tools that emerge constantly. If you don't keep up with that, you'll actually be left behind. Some people love that. Some people actually burn out because of this. So before you jump into a career, um, ask yourself, are you actually ready for lifelong learning and kind of being on the edge of innovation and thinking of new things and being able to incorporate these new tools, new frameworks, whatever may come up into your actual, you know, code base or whatever that may be. So software engineering is not easy. It will test your patience, your resilience, and your ability to actually just adapt. But if you can embrace these challenges, it's one of the most rewarding careers out there. You'll be able to build things that impact millions, hundreds, thousands of people. You have the freedom that you can work anywhere. You'll be part of an industry that's actually shaping the future. So you do have to be a little bit crazy to be a software engineer, but that's maybe exactly why you should. All right, so this is the end of the video. Go ahead and like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Love, peace, and chicken grease. I am out.